We are going to begin on today's 10 minute painting in the sky with a large square headed brush and a mixture of titanium white and primary blue. This is a very bright mixture and I'm using a square headed brush because it can hold a lot of paint and dispense it as well. Your only real drawback here is that it can render streaks, however, if you are very soft with your application, if you're not pressing very hard with the brush, you should be able to get something much more smooth, provided you have a good amount of paint on the brush itself, or water. It's really up to you. Either way, it will smooth out your blends and help you ensure that you get something nice and soft. So once I have all of that blue at the top, I'm taking a titanium white, adding it to the bottom of my sky, presumably where my light is coming from, and blending it up very softly. So you get this gradient, this transition, from a pure titanium white up into this very soft sky blue color. Then I'm going to begin working on the water in between all of my forested mountains. And I'm going to do so with a horizontal stroke. And I'm beginning with a the same blue that I used in the sky, then as I get closer to us, I get closer to the audience, I'm getting a darker pigment of blue. And now you see that we have that same gradient that we worked in the sky reflected down in the water, where you have a much more pure blue at the top and bottom of the painting, and then as you get closer to the center, it turns into a white where the light is coming from. I used horizontal strokes with a little bit more pressure to render a litany of little lines separating varying portions of water, which kind of indicates movement and makes it look less flat than the sky does. Now I'm taking that same brush and a mixture of titanium white and black, and I'm mapping in the light side of my mountains. It also has some green in there, and that green is a mixture simply of my primary yellow and my primary blue. So the green is very, very subtle. It almost comes across as a pure gray, but this is going to be the under layer for our forest. You want something bright-ish, and you want it to ensure that it has the colors that indicate what it is, which is a green, right? But you also want it to be very subtle, so when you layer on the proper greens, they pop. It's all about ensuring that things balance and make each other um, accented well. So with that being said, now I'm taking a darker version of that color, and I'm applying it to the darker sides of these cliffs and hills. As you can see, we are using the same brush yet again, and unlike mountains, I'm not worrying about creating a very sharp middle portion between the bright and the dark. I'm doing more of a blend between the two, and that's fine because these hills are more rolling and the light isn't stark, right? And of course, we're adding all of the darts to the sides of the mountains that aren't going to be receiving light. Now, it's also important to note that as we get closer in the painting, we should be using slightly starker colors. This means slightly darker or slightly brighter, because as you move closer to your audience, generally things are much more clear, and you do pick up on those colors much more, which is why we are adding a pure black to that side of the mountain right here, right now. It's a very subtle difference, but it's an important difference. Then I'm going back over all of that very desaturated flat green with a old square headed brush. So the bristles kind of leaf off in a litany of different directions. And because of that, when you make a tapping motion, you get something that's very random in nature. And in nature, things are quite random. They're unnatural. They are always changing. So by creating trees in this manner, you're creating so many trees very quickly, and you're also ensuring that each set of trees is different from the one next to it. You can slightly rotate your brush in the air to help with this, and I'm applying this color both over the 
grayed green areas and the very dark grayed green areas. It's blending to a point, but that's okay. And the colors, as you can see, they aren't too, too different, but it's certainly more vibrant and more saturated. You want to begin with a very desaturated base and a little bit darker than your detailed layer, that second layer, is going to be more saturated and a little bit brighter. I'm also going to take that mix and I'm going to apply it to the foreground here as well. And yet again, I'm not worried about that sharp line from light to dark. I'm allowing them to blend in between each other and I'm even taking those colors and moving them around as you can see. This is just going to give it more of a natural feel and because the trees don't have a harsh edge like a rock or a mountain, you're not going to see something so stark. So that's just another important thing to remember while we're doing this. Now the colors can get a little muddy because we're adding a lot of paint on top of it, but you can always go in with a fairly thick pigment on your brush and press very softly and it won't blend with the colors underneath, which is really what we're doing here in the dark areas of this very tree covered mountain. Now I wanted to show you a little mistake you can do and that's when you move the really dark colors over into the desaturated light areas. And it's fixable. See, I added some lighter colors on top of it. Or you can just move your finger and wipe it off with the brush. I think it's important to incorporate mistakes once in a while and just show you that, you know what, we all make mistakes in painting. We can mess up, but we can also fix them. And acrylic paints is a, it's a very great medium to remedy and practice with that sort of thing. So don't get discouraged and just keep on painting, keep on enjoying, maybe let it dry, work over it, or again, scrape it off with your finger. It's all okay. Now with that being said here, I'm just working on another mountain here. It's going to be predominantly a lot darker because the light isn't going to be hitting it. And it's a great area for it to be darker because it's going to be the background to our tree so it'll really ensure that our brighter tree stands out. On the note of that brighter tree, I'm now using a medium sized square headed brush and I'm blocking in the base of my tree. I'm using a burnt umber, a little bit of um, black and a little bit of white as well. Of course, all of the paints, the brands, the brushes will be listed in the description of this video. Now, as I'm moving from that base of the tree outwards, I'm making the branches smaller and smaller. If you're having an issue with this, simply add more water to your brush and you'll get much smaller, finer lines, and it'll just be a much more easy process. I'm trying to ensure that not all of my branches are the same, and I also want to ensure that they're constantly evolving, right? They're constantly getting smaller and they're not just like the one next to it. Then I'm taking the same brush that I used for all of the trees and I'm beginning to map in varying areas where I want my leaves. As you can see, we're leaving a couple of areas open to show that blue sky. And that's just going to help add interest to our tree. It's going to make it more three-dimensional. It's going to show that there are areas that you can see through that aren't as dense, that there are different types of branches, right? And it just goes to adding diversity. As I run out of paint, I'm just tapping it down there at the bottom and you get a much more subtle effect, which is great because it looks a lot farther away. Generally, when something is less saturated, it more blends with the background in regards to depth, it's going to look farther away. So here I'm adding a darker color, something much more stark to the middle of a lot of these clusters of leaves, and that's going to make those look much more close to us. So by having both of them, you ensure that you have a tree with a lot of depth. You have some leaves that are very far away, you have some leaves that are very close to you, and it's just going to ensure that you have something quite interesting. I'm then going down and working on the bottom of the grass and foliage and all of that. And I'm doing that in the exact same way that I did the rest of our mountains. And that is with a brighter color. Um, and then I work the black behind it. Or not really black. Again, it is a mixture of green. But if you want to use a black, by all means, use black. 
A lot of people advise against it, and it doesn't really help with depth, but in art, you can't do something wrong, right? It's about what you want, what you subjectively find you like. So, again, if you want to use black, you can use black, but I'm using a mixture of green and blue um, as well. Then I'm taking a very small square-headed brush and I'm mapping in where water is separating our mountains from our reflections. And then in a, uh, a plethora of horizontal strokes, I'm creating additional marks on the water to add some detail and ensure that it all looks quite interesting. I didn't do a straight line across the mountain range. I have it kind of jetting and moving around to ensure that it itself is interesting. Now we haven't cheated and gone past the 10 minute mark, but I wanted to on this one just to show you a couple extra things. We haven't done that in a while, but here I'm taking a small round headed brush and I'm mapping in some clouds. It's great because it ensures we get a feathered edge and I'm just using a pure titanium white here. I'm also occasionally working on top of my mountains and just showing that the clouds are wrapping around them. It's also going to add a lot of depth and if you find that it's not as soft as you'd like, you can use your finger. I'm then going back and adding a lot of additional white to that real center area where the light is emanating from. I'm adding more separating lines from the water and the mountains. And then I'm going to add additional highlights to a couple of the mountains. This is only taking me an extra two or three minutes. So it's a, not a 10 minute painting, but like a 13 minute painting. But I thought that you'd appreciate seeing these extra couple of steps. I'm also adding highlights to the edges of my trees just to make them three dimensional. Again, only where the light is hitting. And then I'm adding a little bit of additional fog down into the bottom of my painting to separate our foreground from our middle ground. So there we have it, our final 10 and or 13 minute painting. I truly hope you've enjoyed. If you're new to acrylics and you want to learn more, there's a link in the description to my book, Acrylic Painting for Beginners. And of course, I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching, and above all, stay creative.